today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree. The Toy Robot. Hi, Ollie. Hi, Ben. Coming out to play. I'll be right down. Hi, Gaston. <coughs> Let's play in the meadow. <coughs> Gaston, fetch! Hi, everyone! Hello, Hello Barnaby. Barnaby! What are you doing? We're throwing sticks for Gaston. Gaston likes fetching sticks. <laughs> oh, that's not a stick. Hello, everyone! Hi, Hi Strawberry! <gasps> What's that? It looks like a tin arm. Gaston, where did you find this? Wow! What's that? It's a toy robot. Ooh. It's a bit broken. We could mend it with magic. Uh, no thanks, Strawberry. We'll fix it the elf way. Elves are very good at fixing things. And we're elves! <laughs> there! Finished! Ooh. So, will it talk? Will it make me a cup of tea? No, it's just a toy robot. It'll do this. Uh. what toy robots do. Let's switch it on. It doesn't do anything. Oh. oh. Maybe it needs batteries. No, it's clockwork, but there's no key. Oh, magic a key. Oh, Holly, I don't think we should use a magic key. Magic can be dangerous. I'm sure it will be OK. Whatever happens, it will be fun. Mm, all right. <coughs> Shush, Gaston. <coughs> OK, let's see what happens. It's working! Master, what is your name? Ooh. Is that what it's supposed to do? I don't know. Uh, I'm Ben Elf. Ben Elf, you are my master. We thought robots went, er, er, er. Help! Help! Oh, oh no. no! Put us down! You silly robot! Put the girls down! I only answer to my master. Ben Elf. Robot, uh, put the fairies down, please. Yes, Ben Elf. And say sorry. Sorry. That was a bit scary. Hmm, it's not like a normal toy robot. I think my key might have made it a bit magic. But it seems to do what I say, so we should be OK. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. What do you have there? We found a toy robot. It was broken, so we mended it. Well done. Ah, yes. This is the old Mark Z33 built by the Elf Factory. Hmm, it was a rather basic model. Uh, please don't get it angry. I beg your pardon, Ben Elf. You talk as if it can understand. Well, it does seem to. It's just a toy robot, only capable of going... Ah, 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 ah. Ah! Put me down, you silly robot. You are a rude old elf. Ooh. Robot, put the wise old elf down. Yes, bad elf. Oh, oh, very strange. I, I don't remember the Z-33 being able to talk. It's escaping! We'd better 
to get it back. Da da dum, do da di da, da da la la, da dum di da, da 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 di da di. What a beautiful sound! Da da di dum, da da di da. Oh, where's it gone? Ah! That sounds like Nanny Plum. Help! Help! <gasps> Robot, put Nanny Plum down. Yes, Ben Elf. Oof! Oh, thank you, Ben. What is this thing? It's just a toy robot. But it does anything Ben says. Really? Yes. Watch this. Robot, clean up the courtyard. Must clean up. Must clean up. Must clean up. It's very good, isn't it? I'd like one of those to do all my cleaning. You can Must borrow my robot up. if you want Must to. That's very up. kind of you, Ben. Must Maybe I'll borrow it just for this evening. Must OK, robot, I'm going home now. But I want you to stay here and tidy the castle. Yes, Ben Elf. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Must tidy up. Must tidy up. My goodness. Must tidy What's up. this? It's Must Ben's robot. Nanny has borrowed it to tidy up the castle. It looks like it's doing a very good job. Must tidy up. Must tidy up. Hmm. I think I prefer the traditional fairy way. Dinner time! Oh, oh dinner! dinner. Ah, I expect the robot has come to serve us our dinner. Must tidy up. Must tidy up. Oh, Must tidy goodness up. me. I think we should tell this robot to stop. We can't. The robot only listens to Ben. So what can we do? Uh, Ben told the robot to tidy the whole castle. So maybe we should go to bed and let the robot finish. Good idea, Holly. The robot should have finished tidying by morning. Must tidy up. Must tidy up. What? Is it morning already? Uh. Must tidy up. Must tidy up. Put me down! Put me down! Uh. Goodness me! What's happening? The robot is tidying up everything. Yes, including us. It's a monster. How do we stop it? Only Ben can stop it. Hello, Mrs Elf speaking. Hello, Mrs Elf. Sorry, it is a bit late, but this is an emergency. We need Ben. Now. Right-o. Ben. There's an emergency at the little castle. We have to go right away. Right-o! Elves to the rescue! <laughs> Who's the best at rescuing? Elves are best at rescuing. And what are we? We're elves! <laughs> it's the elves! Hooray! Look, there's my robot. Ah! Put me down! Oof. Bad Elf. Master. 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 Oh, it's wound down. Hooray! But what could have caused the toy robot to act so strangely? Uh, I think it was my magic key that did it. Ah, magic! <laughs> what have you got there, Gaston? <laughs> it's the proper key. Well, well done, done, Gaston. <laughs> uh, Ben, are you sure that's a good idea? It'll be fine. <laughs> ah, that's the toy robot I remember. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Nature class! Let's check you're all here. Holly, Violet, Rosie and Strawberry. Good. Now hold hands. I don't want to lose any of you in the woods. Ugh, Nanny Plum, do we have to do nature class today? It's boring. Yes, all we do is learn the names of trees. And mushrooms. And frogs. Now, now, girls. Every young fairy needs to know the names of trees and mushrooms. And frogs. And frogs. Up ahead is a lovely example of a mugwort flower. <sighs> ben, Barnaby, Jake and Lizzie. Good. Today we are having nature class. Follow me. Excuse me, wise old elf. Why do we have to do nature class? Because, Ben, it's important that every young elf learns about nature. <sighs> Who can tell me what this is? Um, uh, uh, is it a sort of plant? A welted thistle is the correct answer. Oh. Now, what's the name of this flower? Oh, we seem to have walked into some elves. Good day, Nanny Plum. Hello, wise old elf. Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. We're doing nature class. So are we. Let's team up. Yes! <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Quite so. Elf and fairy nature classes are very, very different. We're learning names of plants and things. So are we. Please, Nanny Plum. Can we have one big class? Please, Mr Wise Old Elf. Oh, very well. I suppose I can handle a few more children. What? Wise Old Elf, there's no need for you to hang around. But, but... You can collect your children when my lesson's over. No doubt there's some charming fairy name for this plant, but my class has identified it correctly as a welted thistle. Oh, isn't it Harry Bittercress? Oh, interesting. Or Harry Bogweed. You both know the silly plant names. So you should both take the class. Hmm, on one condition. No magic. I'm doing nature class today, not magic class. So it's agreed. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Look! Ah, an acorn. Now, what does an acorn grow into? Is the answer an oak tree? I was asking the children. Yes, yes, but an oak tree is the right answer. What the wise old elf is trying to say is that this little acorn will grow into a huge oak tree. Ooh! Cool! Can we see it grow now? Oh, oh. it will take years and years to grow into a tree. Oh. We could give it some magical help. Nanny Palum, we agreed. No magic. But look at the children's sad little faces. They'd so like to see the acorn grow into a tree. No. Please, Nanny Plum, make the acorn grow into a tree. Yes, yes please, Nanny Plum. I'd love to, but it's up to the wise old elf. Please, wise old elf. Oh, very well. I'll just do a little spell. Stand back, children. Just a small tree, please. Yes, yes. Thunder and lightning, north wind blow, little acorn grow, grow, grow! Wow! Nanny Palum, is that your idea of a small tree? Um, it is big, isn't it? 
but I can easily make it smaller. Uh, no, no, it's fine as it is. Well, let's move on. Next up, mushrooms. Ah, oh, good. Mushrooms. Who can tell me what this is? A toadstool. Uh, yes, correct. Now, you should never, ever eat a toadstool. It would make you very... What Mr Old Elf is trying to say is that you should never, ever eat a toadstool. It would make you very sick. Indeed. So, never, ever eat a toadstool. Yes, wise old elf. Of course, I expect the wise old elf would like to sit on it. What? Elves love sitting on toadstools. Madam, I think you will find it is gnomes that sit on toadstools. Elves, gnomes, whatever. You would never catch an elf sitting on a toadstool. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dad. Hello, Mr Elf. Hello, Holly. I see you found my special reading place. Ah, it just catches the sun at this time of day. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, here we have a toadstool. With an elf on top. Um, yes, with an elf on top. He looks very happy. Uh, right. Let's move on. Yes. We have time for one last thing. Goodbye, Mr Elf. Bye. What do you think the last thing is? I bet it's frogs. Nanny always shows us frogs. Yes, it'll be frogs. Who can guess what we're going to see next? <sighs> frogs. Yes. We're going to look at frogs. Um, uh, there aren't any frogs here. Not one frog. Well, that's disappointing. Can we go home now? It's no problem. I'll turn one of us into a frog. Can I have a volunteer, please? Come on. Who wants to be a frog? Goodness, what a lot of miseries. I'll just have to do it myself. Zigzag Zog, make me into a frog. A common frog. Look how slimy it is. <laughs> and how smelly it is. Oh, stinky whippy poo! And how silly it sounds. Well, that brings today's nature class to a most satisfactory close. Uh, uh, Nanny Plum, you can turn yourself back now. I don't think Nanny Plum can turn herself back again. She can't pick up her wand. Oh, what a shame. Now, for your homework... But Nanny Plum, we can't leave her as a frog. Oh, can't we? Oh, I suppose not. Uh, which fairy wants to turn her back again? Me, me, me! me. All right. Holly, do your best. Um, I'm not sure what spell to use. I'm sure Nanny Plum would want you to just have a go anyway. OK, I'll try this. Abracazari. Um, frog to fairy. Oh, it worked. Oh, thank you, Holly. Oops. Sorry, Nanny. You did very well, Holly. But you shook your wand a bit too hard. Africa fairy, frog to fairy. Hooray! You see, children, it's all in the wand control. Yes, Nanny Plum. Fascinating, Mistress Plum. But if we might return to nature class for a... Yes, children. What Mr Old Elf is trying to say is that... That brings today's nature class to a close. close. That was the bestest ever nature class. Thank you, Strawberry. It was excellently cool. Thank you, Barnaby. So, from now on, Nanny Plum and the Wise Old Elf always teach us nature class together. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, if you insist. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs>
Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree. Ben's birthday card. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Ben! ben. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your card. Cool! A space rocket! And here's your present. Wow! A space mobile! We made it ourselves. <laughs> Thanks, Mum! Thanks, Dad! And later, all your friends will be coming to your birthday party. Cool! Who can that be? Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. You're a bit early for my party. A uh, party? Have you brought me a birthday card? A uh, birthday card? Holly, you haven't forgotten my birthday, have you? Oh, uh, uh, happy birthday, Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. Uh, I've just got to pop back home for something. Oh, see you later. Oh dear, oh dear! I've forgotten Ben's birthday! Milk, sugar, flour and an egg! Good, let's do some baking! Hocus Pocus! Nanny Plum! Nanny Plum! <laughs> I've forgotten Ben's birthday. Oh, don't worry, my little one. He'll have another birthday next year. No, no, it's really important. I have to do something for this birthday. Ben is my best friend. Oh. I've got to make a birthday card really quickly, but I don't know where to start. What you need is a little magic to get you going. Ahem, milk. Flour, egg and sugar, paint, brushes, card and glitter. <laughs> Thanks, Nanny. Now, I've got a very nice spell for making birthday cards. It goes... Hocus Pocus Plinkety Plonk. Nanny Plum! Oh, i better go and see what King Thistle wants. Nanny Plum! Yes, Your Majesty? Mm. This chair is a bit hard. Can you do a magic spell to make me more comfortable? Oh, King Thistle, you lazy thing. You could do a magic spell yourself. But my wand is over there. Oh, OK. Humphy, lumpy, dumpy, make King Thistle nice and comfy. Ah. That's better. And some music, please. Oh. Tra-la-la, tra-la-lin. Music, please, sweet violin. Ah, lovely. Thank you. You can go now, Nanny Plum. Oh. Now, where were we? You just said Hocus Pocus Plinkety Plonk. Oh, yes. Ahem. Hocus Pocus Plinkety Nanny Plum! Oh, bother. What can he want now? Nanny! I want a cup of tea! Yes, yes, coming! Uh, this card will never get made. I'll just have to do the magic myself. Now, what was Nanny's spell? Hmm. Ah, yes. Hocus Pocus Plinkety Plonk. Uh, how about make me a birthday card super duper quick? <laughs> it worked! Come on, silly paintbrushes. Haven't got all day. Right. You naughty paintbrushes. 
I'll do a stronger spell to make you go faster. Sam, pop, zip, pow, more, bigger, faster, now! There's your tea, Your Majesty. Will that be all? Yes, thank you. Mummy! Help! Help! Goodness me! Mummy! Make the magic stop! Thunder and lightning, north winds blow! Magic spell! Away you go! Nanny, you stopped it. Yes, but I've had to stop all the fairy magic in the castle. Oh. Oof! What happened to the magic? Ahem. There was a little problem in the kitchen and I've had to stop all the fairy magic in the castle for one day, Your Majesties. Sorry. Oh. And the weather in the Little Kingdom today will be bright and sunny everywhere. Hang on. If you've stopped all the magic in the castle, why is the TV still working? Uh, the TV's not magic. Isn't it? Really? Oh! oh. If there's no magic today, how can I make Ben a birthday card? Well, you could make the card by hand. Really? Could I? And I can help you. Uh, Nanny Plum, I think you'll be busy cleaning up the kitchen. That will take but a moment with my fairy magic wand. But there isn't any magic. You've stopped all the magic for one day. Oh, yes. <laughs> this will be fun. Mmm. This will be fun too. I think I'll start with a picture of Ben. <laughs> it's easy doing things without magic. Yes, really easy. Now, lots of kisses for Ben. And some sparkly glitter. There. Lovely. Yes, it's amazing what can be done without using magic. Yes, Nanny Plum, it is. <laughs> <laughs> now quick, or you'll be late for Ben's birthday party. <laughs> to love his birthday card. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Happy birthday, Ben. Come in. <laughs> I've made you a card. Thanks, Holly. Ben's had lots of lovely cards today. I made my cards with magic. Wow! I made my card with a computer. Oh! I bought mine from a shop. That's nice. Holly, can I have your card now, please? Uh, it isn't very good. I didn't use magic or a computer or buy it from a shop. Uh, I made it myself. You mean you didn't just use magic? Wow, it's fantastic! Ooh! <laughs> Happy birthday, Ben! <laughs> uh, actually, Ben, I did forget your birthday. Yes, I know. You always forget my birthday. Do I? Yes, 
But it doesn't matter. You're still my best friend. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at Gaston's cave. Gaston's visit. Gaston! Are you coming out to play? Oh, Gaston sneezing. Mummy, Daddy, Gaston the ladybird's caught a cold. I'm not surprised. His cave is leaking. Look. Hmm. There's a hole here. Maybe if we move that pebble over it. Good day. Good day, wise old elf. Uh, what seems to be the problem? Gaston's cave is leaking. Hmm. Leaks can be tricky. What you need is a proper builder to fix it. But where can we find a builder? I'm a builder. Really? Oh, yes. Elves are very good at building. And I'm an elf. <laughs> In that case, I command you to fix Gaston's cave. Yes, Your Majesty. A wise decision. Hmm, interesting. There seems to be water dripping in. Yes, and there's a hole up here. <laughs> that hole won't be the cause of the leak. How do you know? With respect, some things are best left to proper builders. So how long will it take to fix the leak? Oh, it will take a very, very long time. And while the building work is going on, the ladybird won't be able to live here. But Gaston's got a cold. Where can he stay? Well, perhaps Gaston could stay with us. Yippee! Are you sure you know what you're doing, darling? Oh, oh of course I know what I'm doing. I'm king. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Oh, I'm afraid insects are not allowed inside the castle. It's all right, Nanny Plum. Daddy's invited Gaston to stay with us. Oh, very well then. Make yourself at home, Gaston. <laughs> Gaston, Gaston, ladybird. I hope he's going to learn to wipe his feet. Gaston isn't well, Nanny. <laughs> and he hasn't got anywhere to stay. I'm still not sure it's a good idea for him to stay with us. Don't worry, darling. Gaston will be no trouble at all. So, where is he going to sit? He can sit on this little chair. <coughs> Nanny Plum, you can speak, Ladybird. <coughs> What's he saying? Gaston says this chair is too little. <gasps> no! That's the Queen's chair. <laughs> Don't fuss, Nanny Plum. The Queen doesn't mind. You, darling. Gaston says this chair is too hard. <clears throat> Actually, Gaston, that's my chair. Gaston says this chair is just right. Goodness, it's like having Goldilocks to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Daddy. You can sit on this little chair. Yummy! Thanks, Nanny. Yes, this food is delicious. I suppose I'd better magic up some special ladybird food. By a ladybird's growl, food smelly and foul. Look, smelly way! <laughs> Gaston loves smelly food. Up. Uh, why isn't he eating it, then? Gaston says it's too cold. Uh, hello, Gaston. Daddy, I think he wants to try your food. Hmm. Have a little taste, if you like, Gaston. Gaston says it's just right. <laughs> Gaston visit us, can he stay with us forever and ever? 
forever, Daddy. Uh, maybe not forever, but he can stay until his house is mended. Oh, goody! Whoa. And the weather in the Little Kingdom today will be bright and sunny everywhere. Look, King Thistle! Gaston's getting better! Well, splendid! And the Pixie Pound has seen a drop oh, oh. to the um, dollar. Gaston says that this TV programme is a bit boring. How about this one? And this programme's too noisy. Hmm. Oh, this programme is just right. <laughs> Look, Daddy, Gaston's not sneezing anymore. So, uh, now Gaston's better, maybe he can go home. But, Daddy, Gaston can't go home until his home is mended. He might catch another cold and then he'll be sad. Yes, we wouldn't want Gaston to be sad. Gaston says you are the nicest king in the whole world. Thank you, Gaston. Uh, maybe I'll go and see how the elves are getting on at your cave. Hello, wise old elf. How much longer is this going to take? As we builders say, there's no point in rushing things. Well, maybe a little rushing wouldn't do any harm. I'm afraid we have a lot of problems to deal with, Your Majesty. Uh, it's probably a silly idea, but have you tried moving that pebble over the hole? <laughs> You're right. That is a silly idea. Maybe it's still worth a try? With respect, Your Majesty, we each have our jobs to do. You're the king, and I'm the builder. Of course. <sighs> it's been a long day. I think I'll go to bed early. Uh, Your Majesty, that might be a problem. What do you mean? Well, it's to do with Gaston. Yes? Nanny magicked this basket for Gaston to sleep in. Well done, Nanny. But the basket was too draughty. Hmm. Then he tried my bed, but that was too soft. Oh, dear. I don't like the sound of this. Don't worry, Daddy. Gaston's found a bed that he says is just right. Oh, but that's my bed. What's he saying now? Gaston says he is very tired and would like to go to sleep now. Ha! <sighs> Good night, Gaston. Sleep tight. So, where are we going to sleep? Oh, that was the most uncomfortable night ever. Oh, how long is Gaston going to stay with us? I did say he could stay here until his cave was mended. And how long will that take? I don't know. Let's go and see how those elves are getting on. Hello. Have you fixed Gaston's cave yet? Gaston really misses his home, wise old elf. Good news. We've replaced the rotting wood, plastered the ceiling... And fixed the leak? No, not yet. But I'm sure in time we'll sort it out. Have you just tried moving this pebble? <sighs> Hooray! King Thistle's mended Gaston's cave. Well done, Daddy. Amazing work, Your Majesty. Have you ever thought of becoming a builder yourself? Uh, actually, no. I think I'll just stick to being king. Look, Gaston. Your cave's ready. You can go home now. <laughs> Gaston says... Thank you, and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gaston. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gaston. It was fun having you to stay. We'll be so sad to see you go. <coughs> Gaston says he doesn't want you to be sad, so he'll come and stay with you for a bit longer. It's OK. 
I won't be that sad. <laughs> Gaston insists, Your Majesty. Very well. Lovely. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Big Bad Barry. I say, I'm getting a little hungry. Me too. I think I fancy fish and chips. We don't have any fish, Your Majesty. What? No fish? But I can magic up some fish fingers. Yum, yum. I like fish fingers. No, no. I want fresh fish. Fresh from the lake with chips. I know. Ben's dad has a fishing bite. Then we shall go and see Ben's dad. It's time we put the boat away for the winter, Ben. I'm pleased Bunty has made it through the summer with no accidents. What kind of accidents? The kind where the boat gets eaten. Eaten? Yes. Have I never told you the story of Big Bad Barry the fish? No. It was a dark and stormy night. I was sailing in my favourite boat when suddenly... A fish! A fish, Mr Elf! What's that? I want a fish for dinner with chips. Oh. So we'd like you to take us out on the lake to catch one. I was just putting Bunty away for the winter. Who's Bunty? My boat. Well, one more trip won't do any harm, will it? I'd rather not. Um, she might get wet. Mr. Elf, your king commands you. OK. Climb aboard. <laughs> You'll have to leave your wands here. Magic isn't allowed on elf boats. And, and where else? <laughs> Let's get going. I'll do the steering. Hang on a minute. You might be king on land, Your Majesty, but on this boat, I'm the captain. So I'm in charge. All right, Captain. As long as I get a fish. Polly and Ben, wind the engine. Aye, aye, Captain. King Thistle, take the wheel. Okie dokie, Captain. Ho oh ho! This is fun! Turn ship to starboard. What? <sighs> Turn right. Why didn't you say so? At sea, we don't say left and right. We say port and starboard. Isn't that a bit silly? <laughs> <laughs> we'll fish from the stern. Where's that? <sighs> the back of the boat. Come with me. Fishing is a tricky business. You must have the right type of bait. What kind of bait are we using today? Stale bread. Stale bread? Who likes stale bread? Should we put some butter on it, Dad? And jam? Yes. We're not going to catch anything with stale bread, old boy. Stick a bit of jam on it. Stop! I'm the captain, so while we're aboard Bunty, we do what I say. Aye, aye, aye captain. captain! Now be quiet. Fish don't like noise. Very bossy, isn't he? This is so exciting. Shh, everybody. Now we wait. Are you sure this is right? Of course I'm sure. Come on, let me have a go. Fine, you'll see. It takes time to catch a fish. I've caught a fish. Holly, grab the net. Get ready to catch it. Well done, Daddy. Wow, it's big. It's a whopper, all right. And I caught it. It's only a little tiddler. It must be the biggest fish in the lake. It's too small. That was the biggest fish I've ever seen. I've seen bigger. Much, much bigger. Really? Really. It was many years ago when I first met Big Bad Barry. Big Bad Barry? Who's that? Only the biggest, hugest, most giganticest fish the world has ever seen. No! It was a dark and stormy night. I was out sailing in my favourite boat, Hilda. 
when I first saw Big Bad Barry. I knew straight away I had to catch him. I had to be the fisherman who took him home for the biggest fish dinner in history. I tried several different baits before I found what Barry liked. Cheese. Cheese? Cheese. I put a bit of cheese on the line, and Barry was hooked straight away. The only thing was, he was stronger than my old boat Hilda was. Bad Barry dragged my poor boat Hilda all over the lake. And when he'd finished that, he ate her. He ate Hilda? It sounds horrid. It was. So you built Bunty to replace Hilda? No. First, there was Doris. Then Peggy. There was Abigail, Fifi, and Trixabel. Not forgetting Sabrina, Vicky, and Miss Boo Boo. Barry ate them all. <gasps> I tried to catch Barry so many times, but he was always too strong. So that's where all the cheese went. In the end, I gave up. Big Bad Barry is still out there, somewhere. Ooh. Incredible! I have come to a royal decision. We must catch Big Bad Barry and have him with chips. Hooray! No, we mustn't. I don't want to lose another boat. Not Bunty. Anyway, there's no cheese on the boat. I won't allow it. Barry can smell cheese a mile away, even a mild cheddar. Good. I've got some cheese in my picnic hamper. We can use that. Ah! Cheese on board! Quick, get rid of it before it's too late. What did you do that for? I told you, it's dangerous to have cheese on board. Luckily, I also brought a nice Stilton cheese we can tempt Barry with. No, I refuse to help. Then we'll do it without you. I'm taking charge. Hooray! Ah, it's mutiny! Mutiny on the bounty! We'll catch this Barry and have him with chips. Ben, take the wheel. Aye, aye, Captain. Holly, hold the net. Aye, aye. Here, Barry, Barry. Barry. Come on, Barry. Where are you? It's not working. Here, Barry. Come on, boy. Oh, if we're going to catch Big Bad Barry, let's do it properly. Yes! You must do what I say as soon as I say it. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Captain! Big Bad Barry is too big for that rod. We'll use this rod. Wow! You wanted to meet Big Bad Barry? Here's your chance. Excellent! Now we wait, but not for long. <laughs> Eating him for weeks. He's got the cheese. <laughs> Start the engine. Full sail. We're not going anywhere. Yes, we are. Bad Barry is pulling us backwards. Hang on. We've got him. We've got him. I think he's got us, Daddy. Holly's right. We should never have tried to catch Bad Barry. He's too big. He's too bad. We have to let him go. Never. Aha! He's given up. I don't think so. He's eating the line. Ah, uh, then he can have it. I give in. Sorry we tried to catch you, Barry. No hard feelings, eh? <laughs> ah! He's eating Bunty! <laughs> Launch the lifeboat! <laughs> Abandon ship! Women, children and kings first! Oh, Bunty! Hello, everyone. The chips are ready. Where's the fish? <laughs> oh! What's going on? Big Bad Barry is eating Bunty. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, dear. 
you think Barry would like some chips with that? I think he's full. Alas, poor Bunty. I knew her well. Right. What should we have for dinner, then? I think I'd like fish fingers. With chips! <laughs> <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. The Elf Rocket. No time to read the newspaper, Your Majesty. There is King's work to be done. What King's work? The elves want you to inspect their latest toy. Oh, I don't like these elf toy inspections. The toys are always perfect, and all I say is they're perfect. There's the elf truck now. Hello, Your Majesty. May I present the very latest elf toy? A space rocket. It's perfect. Don't you want to see it fly? <sighs> OK, if I must. Is that it? Yes. But it's called a space rocket. It didn't go anywhere near space, did it? It's just a toy, Your Majesty. Just a toy? I could kick a football higher than that. And rockets should be able to go higher than footballs. Well. I'm sure we can make it go higher. How high? I could make a rocket go to the moon if I wanted to. No, you couldn't. Yes, I could. I'm an elf. <coughs> and elves can do anything. Very well. I command the elves to build a rocket to fly me to the moon. And me! To fly me and Princess Holly to the moon. And me and Gaston. <coughs> and Nanny Plum to look after the children. I bet you can't fly Holly, Ben, Gaston, me and Nanny Plum to the moon. You're on. By tonight. Oh, OK. Marvellous. See you later, then. Come on, Ben. We'd better go and start making that rocket. It's a matter of elf honour. OK. Bye, Holly. See you tonight. Bye. <laughs> Ah, how did the toy inspection go? Uh, did the king say the toy rocket was perfect? Uh, he thought it could go a bit higher. Oh, really? Well, I suppose I could fit as strong as spring. How high does the king want it to go? To the moon. To the moon? And I said we could have some people inside. People inside? By tonight. Impossible. Elf honour is at stake. Elf honour? In that case, we must do it. We'll build this rocket and we'll fly it to the moon tonight. Stop toy production at the Elf Factory. Start work on the Elf Rocket immediately. Right <laughs> Now, I will work out how to get the elf rocket from here... The Little Kingdom. ...to here. The Moon. Ah, Nanny Plum, I'd like you to join us on a little trip this evening to the moon. A trip to the moon? That sounds nice. I'll pack a picnic. Hello? Hello, Your Majesty. The elf rocket is ready. That was quick. Elves work quickly. And we're elves. <laughs> ah! May I present the elf rocket? Not bad. Does it fly? Does it fly? Of course it flies. It's an elf rocket. The rocket will land here, in the Sea of Tranquility. Oh, the seaside. We can make sandcastles. We can have a picnic on the beach. And you can go paddling in the sea. There is no water on the moon. But what is the sea made from? Just rock. A sea of rock? What's the point of that? Listen, everyone. This is a very serious mission. There'll be no swimming or picnic. Here is the main cabin. 
The cabin is a bit tiny. I might stay down below in the kitchen. The kitchen? There isn't a kitchen. No kitchen? What's all this big space for, then? This space is for the fuel, Nanny Palum. I have worked out exactly how much fuel we need to get you to the moon. Where's the toilet, then? There isn't one. You'll just have to go before you leave. No toilet? But if we're having a picnic at the seaside, we'll need... Nanny Palum, it's not a picnic at the seaside. It's a very serious mission. We are going to the moon. Now, all astronauts into their spacesuits, get ready for takeoff. <laughs> What's this for? There's no air in space. You'll have to wear a spacesuit. But we can just use magic to breathe. No, magic is not allowed aboard the elf rocket. You will have to leave your wands behind. <sighs> okay. Astronauts aboard the rocket! Queen Sissel, would you please come with me to the mission control room? Ooh! Systems check! Engines ready! Engines are go! Computers ready! Computers online! Fuel system ready! Fuel systems A OK! Start the countdown! I want to wish you all the best of luck. You are going where no elf has gone before. Or fairy. Or fairy. Oh, sorry, Ollie. You are going where no elf or fairy has gone before. Is everyone ready? All ready and A-OK, -okay, wise old elf. Zero. Here we go. Next up, the moon. Blast off. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Into space. It actually worked. I wasn't expecting that. We are now out of Earth's atmosphere. We can take off our seatbelts. Whoa! I'm flying! That's because there's no gravity in space. I'm flapping my wings, but they don't do anything. Yes, your wings won't work in zero gravity. <coughs> Are you sure there isn't a toilet? What's through this door? No! Don't open that door! <coughs> Hang on! What happened? When you open a door in space, it sucks all the air out of the rocket. Poor Nanny Plum. She's floating away. Hello! My wings don't work! We can hear you through the radio, Nanny Plum. You don't need to shout. Just stay calm. Stay calm? I'm floating off into deep space. Elf Rocket, this is Mission Control. What's going on up there? Nanny Plum opened the door and is now lost in space. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Well, never mind. On with the mission. No, we have to rescue Nanny Plum. Oh, I suppose we must. I'll rescue Nanny. Me too. <laughs> all right. You're all tied to this rope so you won't drift away. Are you ready? Ready! <laughs> We're coming, Nanny Plum! Hold on! Hold on? Hold on to what? Oh, no! We can't reach Nanny Plum! Mr Elf, the rope isn't long enough! Oh, no! Lost in space! And I never even went to the toilet! Here's your lasso, Ben! Thanks, Dad! Keep still! I'm going to throw this lasso around your waist. Got you! Wahey! You rescued Nanny Plum. Oh, thank you, Ben. Oh, thank you, everyone, for rescuing me. Let that be a lesson to you, Nanny Plum. No more opening doors. I was just having a look around. Well, please don't look around. This is a serious mission. Elf! Honour is at stake. Well, I'm very sorry. I won't touch anything again. Fairy's honour. Good. 
Now, everybody strap themselves in. Our next stop is the moon. Oh, good. The sooner we get there, the sooner we can have our picnic. For the last time, Nanny Plum, there will be no picnic on the moon. This adventure continues in our next episode. Picnic on the moon. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Dinner party. Nanny Plum, your pie, mash and chips is delicious. What's for pudding? I hope it's not too heavy. Treacle sponge pudding with blancmange and custard. <laughs> Excellent. Nanny Plum is the best cook in the little kingdom. I say Nanny Plum is the best cook in the whole world. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Hello. Hello. Queen Marigold here. <gasps> King and Queen Marigold. Oh, no. They're so boring and snooty. We were just eating a lovely meal of spinach with sea foam when we thought how nice it would be if you joined us for dinner tomorrow. They've invited us for dinner tomorrow. Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll handle this. Sorry, we can't come for dinner. Oh, dear. What a shame. I know you hardly ever get to eat good food. What? I'll have you know we have the best cook in the whole world. You have the best cook in the whole world? Yes. Oh. Well, then we must come to you for dinner instead. See you tomorrow. Toodle pip. Oh. I've got some good news and some bad news. What's the good news? We're not going to King and Queen Marigolds for dinner tomorrow. Hooray! What's the bad news? They're coming here. Oh, no! What are we going to do? King and Queen Marigold will want to eat something special. Luckily, we have the best cook in the whole world, Nanny Plum. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. What about baked potato stuffed with potato with chips and mash and a fried egg on top? No, Nanny. They will want special modern food. I can cook porridge. That's not modern food. What is modern food, Mummy? It is very delicate food in tiny portions. I can do tiny portions. Well done, Nanny. That is small. <laughs> of course, it will get bigger when the magic wears off. When is the magic going to wear off, Nanny? Um, about now. Excuse me. <laughs> it's not just the size of the food, Nanny. Modern cooking is fussy. No problem. Nanny has until tomorrow evening to come up with something. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Good. That's that sorted. Nanny, what are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. Play? No, Ben. I need to help Nanny learn how to cook. But Nanny Plum's a very good cook. She is the best cook in the world, Ben. But she can't cook modern food. Why does she need to cook modern food? It's what King and Queen Marigold like, and they're coming to dinner tonight. What Nanny needs is a cookbook. Come on. Wait for me. The Great Elf Library. Ooh. Excuse me, wise old elf. Shush. This is a library. Sorry. We need a book of modern cooking for Nanny Plum. But Nanny Plum is an excellent cook. Yes, she's the best cook in the whole world. But she can't do modern cooking. Hmm. Let's see. The Elf Book of Pies, The World of Spaghetti and Mash, A Complete History of Egg Sandwiches. Is there anything modern? 
What exactly is modern cooking, Princess Holly? It is food that's very delicate and special, and not porridge. Oh. Wait a minute. This doesn't look like an elf book. That's because I'm not. Ah! A magical fairy book? What's that doing in my elf library? There are no words in the book. I am a magical cookery book. Where are all your recipes? Oh, if you tell me what you want to cook, I will tell you how to cook it. We want to cook a special modern meal, please. How modern? Uh, very modern. Certainly. You will need the following ingredients. Potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. That doesn't sound very special. Shush, I am thinking. Voila! One recipe for a very modern meal. Hooray! This is a library. Can I borrow this book, wise old elf? You can keep it, Princess Holly. Fairy books do not belong in the elf library. Thank you. King and Queen Marigold, how lovely to see you. Hello, darling. It's always a pleasure to visit your little kingdom. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Nanny's been in the kitchen all day. We haven't eaten a thing since breakfast. We didn't want to spoil a dinner made by the best cook in the whole world. I wonder if baked beans are modern. Nanny, we've got a magic cookbook. Hello, Nanny Plum. Oh, you found my cookbook. Where was she? She was in the elf library. What were you doing in there? I was getting very bored. <laughs> <laughs> the book knows a recipe for a modern meal. Oh, good. What are the ingredients? A potato, a carrot, an onion, some peas and cheese. But that's what I would normally cook. Yes, the ingredients are simple, but the way we cook them is not. Now, boil a pot of water. Chop potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. And put them into the pot. Boil for one minute and then collect the steam. And serve. Is that it? It is a very delicate dish. It's so good of you to have us at such short notice. No trouble at all. We can't wait to see what the best cook in the world cooks for dinner. Oh, sorry, that's my tummy. I'm just so looking forward to this lovely meal. <laughs> dinner is served. Enjoy your meal, Majesties. Oh, yes, such a delicate flavour. So subtle. Nanny? Your Majesty? What's this called? Cloud of vegetable soup. It's just steam. Such a sensitive dish. Mm, how wonderful. I can barely taste it. Does it come with any potatoes? Uh, no. Nanny, I'm hungry. Me too. No problem. These leftover potatoes, carrots, onions, peas and cheese have made a lovely soup. Ooh, yummy! Um, this steam is delicious, of course, but will there be anything else to follow? Yes, even though it's very filling, I could eat a tiny something more. I could eat a lot, lot more. <laughs> What's that lovely smell? It's coming from the kitchen. This is delicious, Nanny. Mmm, it's the best. I say, what's this? It's just the children's supper. It smells very nice. It's only some soup I made from the leftovers. It's not very modern. You wouldn't like it. Could I try just a little bit? The taste is so tasty. Can I try some too? And me. And me. Oh, yes. So filling.
Dingle. Marvellous, Nanny. Ahem. I have an announcement to make. Nanny Plum is indeed the best cook in the whole world. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Now, what would everyone like for pudding? Something modern or my treacle pudding? Treacle pudding! <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Elf Farm. Cows! This way for the Elf Farm tour. Now, children, who can tell me where carrots come from? Carrots come from the Elf Farm! Yes, Nanny Plum. Does any child know where carrots come from? Um, the Elf Farm? Very good. Hard hats on, please, and step this way. Now, what animal gives us eggs? A sheep. No, strawberry, not a sheep. A chicken. Yes, Jake, that's right. <laughs> so you see, the elf farm gives us all the food we need. What about milk? Milk comes from very big animals. Elephants? No, not elephants. Milk comes from cows, but we don't have any cows on the elf farm. So where do cows live? On the big farm. Can we go to the big farm? I want to see some cows. No, no, no. The big farm is far too dangerous for elves and fairies to visit. Really wise old elf. You are making a fuss. And what would a fairy know about animals? Fairies love animals, don't we, girls? Mm. Especially fluffy little kittens. Ah. Hmm. The big farm is full of big animals and big people with big feet. I've been to the big farm and it was fine. Who wants to go? <laughs> Righty ho! Come along, children. Hooray! Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, today we'll be going to the big farm to learn about cows. <coughs> oh, I'm not sure if the ladybird should come with us. Please, wise old elf. Oh, very well. As long as he behaves himself. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston likes you. Mm, charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Here we are, the big farm. Watch out for the cattle grids! What? Ahem. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Now, remember, everyone, big people have very big feet and you never know where they're going to step. With luck, we won't meet any big people. But if we do, please keep calm. No panicking. Wise old elf, is that one of the big people? Eh? Ah! Big people! Ah! Ooh, a little toy bus. Ah! Please put us down. Oh! It's OK. It's Lucy. She's just a little girl. She's a very big little girl. She's ginormous. Hello. Hi, Lucy. Ooh, more little fairies. I'll have you know I'm not a fairy. I'm an elf. Have you got wings? Can you fly? Elves do not fly. Can you do magic spells? Elves don't do magic. Oh, so what can you do? Elves do, um, lots of things. And we're elves! <laughs> and we're fairies! Wands away, please, fairies. A farm is no place for magic. <laughs> As you can see, Lucy, this is a rather bossy elf. <laughs> Lucy, we want to see where the milk comes from. We want to see cows. Can you show us, please? Yes. Follow me. <laughs> the 
these are the chickens. Yes, we know. And we know what chickens give us, don't we, children? Eggs! Yes, Jake. Hello, chickens. Some fairies and elves have come to see you. Of course, chickens are quite stupid creatures because they are so big. But I'm big and I'm not stupid. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, sorry, Lucy. These are the sheep. Ah, yes. And who can tell me what sheep give us? Eggs! No, no. Sheep give us wool. <laughs> <laughs> what did the sheep say? Ahem. <clears throat> the sheep said... Bah. But what does bah mean? Bah means... Bah. It <clears throat> Sheep are really very stupid indeed. But Rex is very clever. Who's Rex? <laughs> Rex likes you. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> Rex is a sheepdog. Watch this. Rex is rounding up the sheep and taking them safely into their pen. Wow! <laughs> Gaston wants to have a go. <laughs> You're too little to round up sheep, Gaston. Whoa! What's that sound? It's gone all dark. <laughs> it's Bessie. And who is Bessie? Bessie's a cow. Ooh! A, a cow! cow. She likes you. Uh, uh, now, children, what does the cow give us? A big lick. Yes. And what else? Milk. Well done. But she hasn't brought any with her. <laughs> she has. Watch me. <coughs> it's OK, Bessie. I'll be very gentle. <coughs> And there you have it. That's where milk comes from. A cow. Another interesting thing about cows is they always sit down when it's going to rain. Oh, oh, Nanny Plum, that's just a silly fairy tale. It's true. Cows sit down when it's going to rain. Oh, yes, yes. What a superb example of a female bovine quadruped. I just felt a teeny drop of rain. These are the cow's udders. Yes, I definitely felt some rain. Uh, wise old elf, maybe you should get out from under the cow. If only I could take a closer look. Oh! <gasps> oh dear! It's raining and I haven't got my umbrella. What about the wise old elf? Ooh. He's under a cow. At least he's dry under there. Oh! Oh! Lucy, could you get Bessie to stand up, please? I'm sorry. Cows never get up when it's raining. Uh, Daddy Plum, you may now use magic if you wish. I didn't think you liked magic. Just get me out. If you're sure. I'm sure. Abracazow, up you get cow. <coughs> now, what was I saying? The last thing you said was... Ugh. That's the sound you made when the cow sat on you. Ugh. Thank you, Strawberry. Oh, no! It's a thunderstorm. Everyone back on the bus. Lucy, you would better go indoors. But I can't. I have to get all the animals into the barn first. Rex can help. But what about Bessie and the chickens? Maybe I could try magicking them into the barn. Oh, no! It's too wet for my wand to work. It is working. Look! It's not magic, it's Gaston. He's copying Rex the sheepdog. Gaston.
Gaston's a shape ladybird. Clever Gaston! <laughs> Thanks for all your help. Here, take some milk with you. Oh, how kind. Oh. Hooray for Lucy! And hooray for the little fairies! And elves! Hooray! We've been to the beach. 